play process, teaching and learning. We are all in we are all involved in that. I will present before you a few examples of that. This is in some sense a random walk. That's why it's a random walk is that you can stop whenever you want it. So when you get tired or I get tired, you will stop it. So can the path is as I said, to introduce some interesting aspects of the whole process of physics, learning and teaching. If you were to ask yourself, what brought you to physics as teachers or students, you may have different answers because physics is on a spectrum. These are all uh, physics teachers of different kinds that you were uh, looking at. From the ancient to the very modern, how many of you have seen, I uh, you know this, who this is? Where they will see him, you can see the MIT website and you can see in YouTube. He is supposed to be one of the great researchers of the modern day and he, he teaches this man, this man. He does experiments. He brings a trolley to the class, lecture hall. And sometimes he appears suddenly like a magician. But no magic, it's logic. There's a difference between magic and logic. So this is how he teaches uh, physics. And all of you surely know how he teaches physics. Otherwise you better know. So these are all different uh, teachers, of, uh, teachers of physics who I would like to pay my respect at the very beginning. So this is my plan, my talk, to tell you a few things about uh, various aspects of these people's uh, teaching physics. We will start a bit seriously. Something which is there, several thousands of years, that has got a special meaning now. Several thousands of years it was told, that only one fourth of education happens during the teacher, between the teacher and the student. The rest is by various other means. So when I was a student, when I heard for the first time, I thought that is wrong. 90% of what I learned is from my teachers only. But what about today? Today, you can switch on, as I said, what are living. You don't have to restrict to your teacher. So in the present day, this uh, thousand year old age has become more meaningful. It has really become meaningful. You get only one fourth from the teacher. The rest of it you get from different sources, various sources. You can listen to people of IIT or MIT giving lectures. There is an NPTEL program. I will talk more about it later. So you have a lot of options today. You know, many different books, journals. Many of them are accessible in open software. And uh, you can listen to the lectures. If you want a course in electronics or whatever, digital electronics or some aspects of civil engineering, you, you have lectures there. See? The only criteria is that you should have a computer and network connection. That is the only thing. And should uh, spare. It's all courses of 40 lectures, complete full courses are available in the net. So that is the situation today. But what are we doing in the name of education? We are collecting lot of data. There is a lot of difference between collecting data and learning and then wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom. When you have time, you think about this. What is knowledge and what is wisdom? How does knowledge get translated into wisdom? That is the point. So people say that if you look at the tree, if you look at the trees individually very carefully, you may forget about the forest. So you need a holistic picture and the right perspective of tree versus uh, the forest. How is learning going on today? I will give an example. If we have seen from all of our households, the little girl, she is in the third standard or fourth standard, they speak English at home because they want to improve the language and all that. And then, there is an English exam. She wrote the exam and came back. What did your mother ask when you write the exam and come back? How did you write? What, how did the other girl write? How did you write? What did you make a mistake? Then she said, only one mistake. The rest of it I got full mark. You, I get full mark. There I made only one mistake. What is the mistake? They asked me what is the past tense of think. I thought and thought and finally wrote thunk. So this is how we, we don't get it. We have knowledge but we don't experience, we don't put it in our practice. What is the best science of it? Physics, chemistry, biology, which is the best? One great chemist, uh, I was there in the audience and he was giving a lecture. He said, chemistry, chemistry is the ultimate and best science. The moment I get up, what do I do? I brush my teeth with chemicals. When I have some tea, chemicals, oh, chemistry, chemistry. Then I was like, oh, I should have taken chemistry. And the next day when I got up, I was wondering, what do I do when I get up first? When I get up first, I open my eyes, optics. Then I was very happy that I am working in optics rather than chemistry. Uh, uh, but then if you look at a little uh, more uh, 
deeper into it. What do you do when you wake up, you open your eyes, I don't know. Or before anything else, you have to open your eye. Okay? You have to open your eye and then only you open this side. So it is deeper than that. It's beyond all the sciences, physics, chemistry, and all So probably the students argue with each other, your subject is better, my subject is better and all. How are inventions made? How are inventions made? How do you think the wheel was revealed? God said, let there be wheel. You are seeing God's picture, right? God said, let there be wheel and there was wheel. That's not how the wheel was discovered. My point is, behind every discovery, every invention, there is a lot of thought process which goes I will emphasize on it later also. So this is a lot of planning, a lot of uh, thinking process goes beyond any discovery. So, physics, the bottom line is that physics is for hard working students. And not for? Not for? Hardly working students. Okay. So this is important. There is often an argument between uh, whether uh, experimental physics or theoretical physics, which is better and what is the relation between this. There is experiment, there is simulation, there is theory, all go hand in hand. Without that, just imagine how you, you, you have to have put in a lot of thought process, lot of uh, trial and error before you make the, even the first discovery, very first discovery in uh, invention in physics. Probably the modern science starts with the Descartes. Descartes made the Cartesian coordinate system, right? You have heard about it, but the mathematicians call him a mathematician, physicists call him a physicist, and philosophers call him a philosopher. That is what Descartes was. Now, let us look at some aspects of uh, philosophy. He is considered to be the father of modern philosophy. Everything starts with the him. Before him, people thought the philosophy was, I exist. Therefore, I think when I get back. But what Descartes told is, I think, therefore I exist. What is the difference between these two? That's the homework. You can think about it today. What is the difference between I exist, therefore I think, and I think, therefore I exist. The statue, the famous statue of the thinker, is inspired by this philosopher. Descartes is the first one who said the physical universe can be described as a gigantic mathematically designed engine. You can describe it mathematically. You can describe its equations. The universality, as Hans uh, was pointing out, the universality. If I do an experiment here, somewhere in Africa or US, if they would be the same experiment, it should be universal. The research should be the same. Okay, what has happened? How has this evolved? Before 17th century, so situation in 17th century, I think therefore it exists. What is happening today? What is our philosophy? Is it better than this? Right? I will say it can't exist. That is how the philosophy is evolving. You all probably have Facebook pages. If I were to stand here and say that don't use Facebook and waste your time and all that, you will all will say, what oh, so we did become, you will walk out of the lecture. So I would say, okay, use Facebook. But sometimes face the book also. <laughs> now in the next few minutes, I will tell you how to become a genius. The first recipe is very simple. Go and sit under the nearest happy tree. You know why Kerala does not have genius? There are too many genius people. <laughs> you have a confident list and that is very dangerous too. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we should be peaceful. When we don't know, when we are all worried in this region, for example, now we are all worried when the damping is going to break and we are going to be walked out to some sea. We have such fears. And uh, this thing, so we can't. Okay, coming to the point. How did Newton become uh, gay? What is the main uh, point here? Is it because of the apple? What the textbooks and teachers do not tell you is the following. There is a finite time between, number of years between the apple and the discovery. Just by knocking it, the discovery doesn't come out of it. If some toss doesn't work, what do you do? Hit it like that and the light comes out. It doesn't like that. The brain doesn't work like that. So what happens is you need the prepared mind. It's often said, chance, luck meets a prepared mind. When luck, luck knocks your door, you must be prepared. If you are sleeping, you will not be able to make it. There was one person who wanted to become a billionaire. Is there anybody who doesn't want to become a millionaire? So he wanted to become a millionaire. What is the best method to do it? Every day morning he used to pray to God. Oh God, give me the first prize in the lottery. Every day. 
30 days went on like that. At, at the end of 30 days, God got annoyed. He appeared before him. You fellow first go and buy the ticket. <laughs> Otherwise, even I cannot give you a lottery. So that, you get the point. So you have to buy the ticket and then pray God. So you can sit down on the coconut tree, but after doing you do the homework. Okay, you get an idea from there. There is no excuse for homework, hard work. You ought to do that, otherwise there will not be any excuse. Same thing for everybody, Kekulai. Everybody goes to sleep every day. But uh, what happens to Kekulai? We will come to Kekulai later. So, what happens is, you work hard. You carry an idea as your passion. Always you carry an idea. And then, the subconscious mind works on it when you are relaxed. When you are relaxed, the door between the subconscious and conscious mind opens. And when that opens, you get an idea, a brilliant idea, and you become vague. That's what happens. That's what happened to Kekulai. That's what happened to everybody. So sometimes you have seen this. One day, somebody was, uh, somebody was always feeling, I forgot something, I forgot. I wanted to do something today, definitely. And he was going to sleep. But something, there is something very important today I wanted to do. And he kept on thinking and thinking for a moment. Then finally he found out, today I wanted to sleep well. That's what I wanted to do. So sometimes our mind works like that. But the point is that you have to, you have to be prepared and then your subconscious mind will open. Nobody can say, today's technology or science or religion, nobody can say how or when you can tap the subconscious mind. There are different techniques, different uh, saints and different psychologists have given various methods, but nobody can guarantee any method. You may have your own, you may have to find your own method to tap into the subconscious mind and become a genius. You all know the table story, right? The aliphatic compounds, aliphatic compounds will be born, adding carbon, carbon, carbon. But at the number six, something happens. Number two, number three, there is a connection between the properties. But number six, the properties are entirely different. How can you explain this? Structure determines the properties. Properties are determined by the structure. So people are worried, what structure can I put so that I get the properties properly? And then he was always thinking about that. And one fine night, he got a dream that the structure can be toiling around like this. That's how he got the so the point in all this, including this, is this. You take part, I think people put come back only once a year or something like that, but whatever it is, whatever. You may do all those things, visiting at the tree or sleeping or taking part, but the hard work, the passion, the burning desire to, to find an answer, that must be in you. And when you are a prepared, when you are a prepared mind, then chance will meet a prepared mind and the miracles will happen. And that's the only way you can become a genius. Genius makes new combinations, different combinations compared to what is existing. You have to think differently. That is going to be one of my main sub themes, to think differently so that you can innovate and get a new thing. Like uh, Edison, Edison uh, I saw an interesting quotation on the staircase. Did you observe this? How many people saw that? There is an interesting quotation from Edison written here in the staircase. He, you know, he was struggling to get the invent the first bulb. What is the problem with the bulb? Everything is fine here, everything works, but the material, the material you put in the filament, you put in the bulb, that burns up too fast. Who will buy a bulb that is going to stay for uh, one day or one hour? Today, after one year, the bulb goes, you are thinking that it will take it. So who is going to buy the bulb which is going to last for five minutes? So he tried all of the materials he knows. He tried thousands of materials. All of them failed. And the last one, usually the last one is the one which works. So finally he arrived at something which worked. Then he said, I won't say that I have failed a thousand times. I will only say that I have discovered a thousand materials which will not go into the body, which cannot make a body. That's what he said. Talking about what is there is another interesting story. Imagine the dark ages, the real dark ages, I mean. The real dark ages. There is no electric light anywhere. Can you imagine? In our childhood, we used to see the stars much more brighter than you see today because there is optical pollution everywhere. So those days, when there was no light at all anywhere, no electricity, no electric light, light was not discovered, it was totally dark. Only one part of the country, one house or one uh, uh, place in the whole world is a little bulb. And that is where Edison threw a party. Edison put bulbs around. First time, first time the bulb was announced to the world. And it was, uh, uh, he invited many important people to come and uh, see them. Only at that point, nowhere else in the whole globe there is any light. The first bulbs were hung there. Then, the minister came, the minister came and I you know what the minister's attitude of the sign is. He looked at like that. Okay, will there be any use for this? He asked the silly car, will there be any use for this? 
minister didn't know what to do. He's been insulted outright. But the poor minister didn't know. So he said, one day you will be able to put a tax on it. Even today we are paying the tax. So that's what happened for Edison. Why am I bringing Edison here? Working hard is another step towards being a physicist or being a genius. There is no other way you have to work hard. And Edison is the epitome of the example of uh, this. You have to reconsider the world. You have to change your perspective. If you don't change your perspective, if you think the same way others have thought, then you will, know, you will not go forward. Like the famous statement of standing on the shoulder of the giants. Not only standing from the shoulder of the giants, be bold to question even the giants. And think different, that's bold thing. See, you have to think, uh, have a different approach. What is that picture there? Basically, three. Yesterday I saw a new paper on cartoons when board would say, Trichy, there is a movement going on in Trichy. They said, let us change our name of our place to Trichy to Trichy. They want to put a lot of trees there and that's a good thing. So you change your viewpoint, change your perspective, and then you will solve problems. How to solve a difficult, tough problem? Not only in physics, sciences are everywhere. If you want to solve a tough problem, sometimes you have to think differently from the convention. Let's look at the challenges. What is the best camera? I often ask my student, what is the best camera? Some people say Yashika, some people say whatever other thing. We have insulation. What is the best camera? Yes. This is the best camera ever. This camera works so clearly, brilliantly 3D. Always 3D puts so well. This camera never fails. And even if you don't, if you, if you mistreat it also, it will stay for one year, or 100 years without any problem. Conversation, all those things, perfect. And no maintenance required. No attached computer, no attached laptop, only the attached network. And that also that's a brilliant image processing. Compared to any other image processor you can have. So this is what we have. What about light? What is one of the challenges today to get cold light? When you read, for an exam under a bulb, this bulb is better, but the old tungsten filament lamp, if you read, you will know what I'm talking about. The light, the bulbs emit mostly heat rather than light. So one of the challenges is to get cold light. Where do you get cold light? In nature of the city, there are some silly instant which give you cold light. Which give you a sense. Just imagine the firefly, we never knew. Suppose it had a filament lamp at the back. <laughs> the back will be always on fire, literally. Okay? So fortunately, it has been given with a cold light source. So you go and look at nature. My point here, this point is, if you want to become a genius, you want to become a physicist, look at nature and learn a lot of things from the nature. Compare your laptop with your laptop. You will soon realize that your laptop is a wonderful computer. Even today we can't make a thing like that. The food problem. Food problem, the biggest problem people die. But what about the silly plants can make their own food? The silliest grass on this planet can make its own food. Only we are trying to mimic it. So far it has not been successful. For all this, we need to look at the uh, look at nature. Somebody told, we are all organic mixtures of organic chemicals. Suppose you List what all things are there on my body, all those things, and look at the price. It may be something like 100 rupees or few hundred rupees. But is my worth 100 rupees? Is your worth, uh, is your price 100 rupees? No, it is much more than nobody can. Uh, the human being's price is uh, spiceless, that's only what we can use. So look at nature and try to learn from that how nature does various things. This is the next step for becoming engineers. There is an interesting book, Letters written by a father to a daughter. Who has written this book? <laughs> Have you read this book? Please try to read. It may be even available like in, uh, in some website, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't much see that in the uh, books. This is one book which all the students should read. Wonderful book. There is also an elaborate thing involved in this. Nehru was in prison for me, in a British prison. And he didn't, uh, I mean, what will one do when one is in a prison? Try all the time, waste time, or my time is wasted. He wrote. He wrote letters. Not only he wrote letters, the letters he wrote are excellent lessons in science, especially how to learn from nature. And that he has been a wonderful book. So this is the next point. Look at nature. How do you think differently and solve problems? As I said, my main aim is going to be how to think differently, how to change your perspective and solve difficult problems. So I'm talking about a very serious thing, but so that you will remember it, I'm trying to to give you very silly examples. How do you solve this problem? There may be many ways of solving this problem. This is one of the ways of solving this problem. 
Es war eine geheime Sorge. This doesn't want you to know the solution. The solution is in the next slide, okay? But don't worry, I have other copies and all that. But uh, I'm going to get this. Uh, you have another computer? Okay. Yeah, this is the solution. That's the solution. Think differently and you can solve the problem. So you can think one. Think differently, laterally, laterally, different, totally different from. Now you know you can suggest a solution for this problem by changing your perspective. Right? I have stuck this picture in my lab so that the students can see all the time when they get work on. <laughs> now why do you know the trick, right? Solve the problem. Uh, conventional classic problems, these are classic problems can be solved. Which are the parallel mountain before Mount Everest was restored? Whether it is discovered or not, it, was, it is still the parallel mountain. Like somebody said in the class, oxygen was discovered in the 16th century. Then one student had a doubt. What are, how do people live before that? <laughs> now I will uh, first visit problem. I have a ball in my hand, I release it, it goes up. Is it possible or not? I have a ball. When I asked this to somebody, they said you are standing upside down. No, that is good. <laughs> I am releasing a ball. If I release something, it will fall down. But one fine morning I released it and then from there the ball goes up. Is it possible in this? It is possible actually by more than one place. There are many solutions to this problem. You have to think differently, that's all. You have to change your perspective. Is it possible? Any solution? Another solution is to feel helium. Suppose helium is filled in there. Helium balloons. Then if I release it, it will go right? Any other solution? Suppose I am standing at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> what is happening? So it's possible to solve problems. You have to think differently. That is the only way to become a genius. Then don't ask me why you didn't become a genius. You are amazing as how to become a genius. The simple reason, when I was a student, nobody gave me this lecture. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an opportunity, take the opportunity. Okay? Now, there is another interesting aspect related to physics here. There is cricket game going on, and the multinationals and America wants that the brilliant, uh, what is the power of India? The brilliant young minds. Several sharp, brilliant young minds, that is the power of India. They don't want the young minds to think. They want that all the people to always watch the stupid box and not think. Because if Indian youth thinks, ultimately India will be the superpower. So they have found a nice trick. Have cricket games all the time. 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30.4. So all the time you are glued to the TV. Cricket game. So one principle, very sincere principle, really like this to happen. So the principle said, I am going to put fine. If you miss one class, they are missing classes just like that. If you miss one class, you have to pay 10 pesos fine. It is a reasonable principle. So, the principle has some principles. So, 10 pesos are fine. Second day, the square of it. Third day, the square of that. I have a few students, students, whatever you say, students will be students. They missed it. Two, three, four students missed it. So, three students came to pay the fine. The first one brought a big. Uh, can you calculate? Four days, how much it will be? 10 pesos. 10 square by set, 10 square square by set, 10 square 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 by set. That many, that much amount he has to bring. But the second student came and just gave one rupee, one rupee 10 by set to be precise. And said, why? How? Why not? The correct principle could not do anything. He said, first day 10 by set, second day, square of 10 by set is how much? One rupee. Next day, Square of 100 rupees? <laughs> 1 rupee. Square of 100 rupees? 1 rupee. So, how do you pay your bills? You just give 1 rupee. The third student was still bright. The step, third student probably got first prize in the year. <laughs> third student said, just give 10 paise. And said that. First day, 10 paise. 
second day square of that first day point one rupee second day point not one rupee third day not part one rupee what I told you does it have any connection with physics does it have any connection with physics what I told you just now is an example of what is called an attractor in a dynamical system attractor in a dynamical system a simple pendulum a simple pendulum, if it uh, oscillates with friction, finally it will come to one point. That point is called an attractor of the problem. Otherwise, there will be an edge of driven pendulum. You keep driving it, it will go on to infinite amplitude. Or, oh, if there is friction, it will, sorry, did I say with friction? With friction, it will come back to one point. Without friction, it will always be on an ellipse. This is called the attractor in chaotic dynamics. We use this terminology. Now, another example of thinking differently. I want people to find the area of this. What fraction of the white triangle, the area of the white triangle, is this particular triangle? The answer also I will give you one fourth. The center triangle has an area one fourth of the big triangle. This is the problem to be solved. If you solve the problem, it is very difficult. Actually, I tried. I sat for some five. Uh, 10 minutes I spent with the various constructions and all that. But then I sort of gave up. I have other important things to do, so I gave up. You can try this moment. But if you think differently, this can be solved in one second. Shall we solve it? The problem, is the problem clear to everybody? Yeah. What is the fraction? What fraction is the, is the area of the center triangle? What fraction is that of the entire triangle? The answer is given to you 1 4. <coughs> Shall we solve? Uh, solve it? Look at it. Concentrate. Solve. The problem is solved. Shall you do it again? That is the problem. And that is the solution. <laughs> you don't have to opt out anything. It is very clear that you have solved the problem. This is another example of using lateral thinking or different thinking to solve the problem. I will uh, tell you about a Captain Cook who was an explorer. He used to go and discover new worlds. But what is the risk in that profession? There is a professional risk in that profession, occupational hazard. If you have that job, you may end up with an island which is inhabited by manatees. So he finally ended up with manatees and manatees decided to cook him. Then he said, oh, how can you cook me? I am a great uh, I mean, uh, explorer. And, uh, oh, you are a great explorer. Okay, then we will give a concession. We will decide, you can, uh, we will do a concession here. You can make one statement. And depending upon the statement, we will choose the way of your death. You make a statement. If the statement is true, we will roast you. If the statement is false, we will fry you. That's the only option available to you. He made a statement and they couldn't do anything to you. What are the statements? Please roll, kill me. That is not the statement or any of the translations of that. What is the statement he made? Nobody has heard this. This is not popular thing uh, around the uh, college students to discuss in the high school college students. He made a statement. Please listen carefully. Listen to the problem first. They said, if you make a statement, if that statement is true, we will roast you. If the statement is false, we will fry you. He made the following statement. You will fry me. What is so what? You will fry me. Suppose they fry him. Then that statement becomes true. true. Then they have to roast, roast him. Okay, what is the big deal? Roast him in the beginning. So roast him. If they roast him, what will happen? The statement becomes false. Then they have to fry him. So they have to fry him if they roast him. <laughs> the only way is, so they don't know what to do, they have to beat you. So sometimes you can save your life also. So, this is of course a bit difficult to understand in the first time. This is the famous Barber's Paradox or Russell's Paradox. It's called Barber's Paradox because I won't spend much time on it, but an army captain, very serious, severe army captain, serious army captain had a problem, the barber was in. So he got one of the soldiers and gave an order. His order is an order able to obey it. You go and shave all the people who don't shave themselves. No problem, he went and shaved all the people who don't shave themselves. Then, he started shaving himself. Then he had a problem. What is the order? 
shave all the people who don't shave themselves. So, can he shave himself? Then he belongs to the other group, right? So, this is, okay, I will simplify it with another example. <coughs> Read this statement. This statement is false. Is it true or false? This statement is false. If it is, when will it become true? When it is false. When it is false, it becomes true. When it is true, it becomes false. It's very simple. It becomes true only if it is false. It becomes true, it is true only when it is false. It is like our road rules. What is our road rule in India? Left is right. Left is right and right is wrong. Left <laughs> 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 side is the right side and right side is the wrong side. So logic, why am I talking about all this? Logic, physics is based on logic. Mathematics is based on logic. And mathematics is the language of physics. So we will be careful about the logic. <coughs> now we take a deviation and I am going to introduce to you various things which makes physics education interesting, which you can all use, teachers can use, students can use. Just look at this. There is a website called, uh, that a particular website, you will see wonderful things there. From school level onwards, very interesting things. Uh, what he specializes is wonder from least. He gives step by step instructions, he gives a video in any language. You can uh, listen to that in any language. And uh, this will, the cost of making a car will be 10 rupees or something like that. So in this summer, all the students present here, especially the prize winners, should take it as a challenge, look up that website and make at least 10 of their working condition. You will, you can ask your father, the budget is 200 rupees, 100 rupees to buy the equipment for, equipment required for, some simple thing, balloons and things like that. The other 100 rupees for chocolate as reward. That's all you require to do that. And when you do that, you can make a video and upload in YouTube, or you can send it to me, I will put it in our uh, website. If it's a nice, uh, sufficiently good video. I will, I will show you at least one video. To do. These are all available in the net. <coughs> net, as I said in the beginning, there are so many things available in the net. Now let us look at this. Sometimes videos give problem, but let's see if we can see, it will be nice. <coughs> Thank you. I'll speed it up. Why is it a cat? 
a difficult thing, in, uh, a very difficult aspect in physics and mathematics also is calculus. You know, in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu the questions will come only from the textbook. No other person. Then they will say, I will have a strike and they will say, out of the level. The textbook will have a chapter. After the chapter, there will be some questions for exercises. Only that will come in the exam. So everybody will get 99 percent. So how do you learn calculus? Wherever you see x square, write 2x. Wherever you see sin x, write cos x. And wherever you see secant x, <laughs> okay, whatever it is, <laughs> you write after that. Okay, so there are some 10 things given to you. So your calculus knowledge is only that. Wherever you see x square, write 2x. You get 99% of the mark. This is how it is going on with the state board in Tamil Nadu. I know, I know, that's why I'm accepting that. Fortunately, it is not like uh, that in Canada. The text will have a plus d whole square, the question will have what is c plus d whole square. What is this? Rama bought uh, so many eggs and uh, 10 of them was, uh, see, if you say Krishna bought so many eggs, uh, all sorts of things. <laughs> so let us see how Feynman teaches calculus. Feynman brings in this nice story. There was a student, a bad student who failed a course in physics, and he would not become a scientist when he became a police uh, officer. And once when this police officer was doing the duty uh, in the traffic police, the professor is driving at 70 km per hour. So what do you need to stop? You are arrested. You are going at 70 km per hour. Then he said, what? Who said 70 km? My house is only 5 km from here. <laughs> I am not going for a long hour. I have a lecture after 10 minutes. What do you mean? No, no. If you go like this, you will cover 70 km in 1 hour. If I go like this, I will hit against the what? Median. If you hit against median, there will be problems. If I go like this, I will hit against the median. What is the problem? No, no, actually you calculated that. If you work in the second, so many seconds, you will cover so many centimeters. Show me the rule talking about covering so many centimeters and so many seconds. Is there any rule like that? No. No, sir. Don't do all those things. What I mean is, after one hour, you will be covering 70 kilometers. <laughs> then come after one hour. <laughs> According to Indian law, you can first just steal 2007 lakh crore and then you will be arrested. You cannot be arrested for you are going to steal 2 lakh crores tomorrow. You cannot be arrested for that. You cannot arrest me for what I am going to do after one hour. Try me or not, doing the crime which I am talking about. So, that's a very difficult other answer. Then he finally said, at this instant you are traveling at 70 km per hour. Then he said, at this instant I am here, I am not running. <laughs> at this instant I am here. What is the most important fundamental concept in physics? Space and time. At this instant I am here. So what is the answer? What is the physics answer to this? That is how Feynman introduces calculus in the Feynman lectures. If you want more interesting stories like this, you can go to Feynman lectures in this. Okay, so he says, okay, what is the answer? You consider a very small interval of time delta t, push delta t to 0 and in the limit, you define limit as delta t delta to 0 delta x delta t. That is how calculus is defined. Calculus is uh, like a type of walking, little bit this way that you will follow. So, we are talking about space and time. Where are you? What are you? Are you relaxed and comfortable? If the lecture is boring, you will be relaxing very comfortably. But then even then you are not relaxing comfortably. What are you doing actually? You are travelling at a very high speed of uh, 500 meters per second. And you are annual speed, so much of annual speed, the speed is 1 lakh per hour. Is it relaxing? You call this relaxing. You can't get sleep tonight. So we get uh, we think like a vast universe, the space and time. You think that you are more. So it's a negative message. I don't want to give you a negative message. So I will say, physics says you are now here, space and time. Put your fix your space and time. So initially physics will tell you you can fix your coordinate and time. And then you will say that okay, if you fix coordinate, something else cannot be fixed and all that. We'll come to that later. I mean, we will not come to that in this lecture anyway. What is meant by up? What is up for one? Is it down for the other? It's not. So the word is like that. So that's how you can feel that we are other. So I thought when I was a child that uh, people walk upside down in America. So the best way to go to America will be what will happen if you drill a hole right here? If you drill a hole, 
And suppose for argument's sake, let's assume that there is no lava, there is no molten metal and all that inside the earth crust. Then, what is the best way to go down there? Jump. Make a hole like this. Jump into it. Will you reach somewhere again? What will happen if you jump like that? Through the... You will be attracted towards the center. Then will you stop at the center? You will proceed. Will you go to the other side? By the time Aoma comes running to hold you, you will be back. And you will be going up and down forever. So this is how the world is. What is the meaning of Ananta? Ananta means no end. No end. There is no end to infinity, right? Ananta means no end. Infinity. Who is lying down on infinity? Who is located in infinity? Ananta Shayanam word meaning is a Sanskrit word. In Mayanam also it means Ananta Shayanam. Kedakunna. Infinity in Kedakunna. Located at infinity. Who is located at infinity? God? No. Who is located at infinity? Infinity. We are all infi located at infinity. We are all located at infinity of space and time. That is what physics tells us. The now here concept. The now here. This space and time. Space is an infinite thing and time is an infinite thing. Of course. Time, of course, after time, more minutes will be confined. But then, we are at the crossroads of infinity. That's what the philosophers tell us. So, it is not the God. It is we who are like everything. What is space? Can we define space? Shall we try to define space? Space, what is the problem, sir? Space is what is between this chair and this table. I don't want this chair and this table. I don't want matter. Tell me what is space. No, no, between the earth and the moon. No, no earth and one moon. What is space? You cannot define space. If you can't have matter, you cannot define space. Right? Okay, let's go to the easier question. Define time. Time is uh, one thing. That is what is the time? What is the difference between what is time and what is the time? I have a traveler, an African traveler was traveling in England. He didn't know how to ask this question. So he stopped an Englishman and asked that because if you go to another country, their time will be different. Sir, what is time? The Englishman said, My dear friend, you have asked a very philosophical question. What is the time you can answer easily? But what is time you cannot answer? What is time? Time is a duration between uh, so many uh, wavelengths, so many rotations. No, I don't want wavelength, I don't want atoms, I don't want rotation. I don't want pendulum, I don't want uh, sand. I want what is time. You cannot define time without matter. So space and time are properties of matter. Under properties of matter in the new textbooks we have, what space to time. Okay, I'll give you a definition of time. You can write down time. Is a parameter which keeps varying continuously with time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only definition which I can think of. Now, some boss will ask you, what are you doing? Relaxing. If you know the first law of Newton's first law, there is no cause required for relaxing. There is no cause required for relaxing. The cause is required only when you want to change of your, you want to change your state of relaxation. You want to put this leg down and that leg up, then force is required. You want to run. If you are running at a uniform speed, you need a force only to change the force, to change the thing. So relaxing is not dangerous. Relaxing you don't need that. Being in equilibrium you don't need a force. You don't need a force. That's what the first law says. I'll say you say a press. There was a, uh, somebody was uh, trying to get up and the mother was trying to wake him up. You want to wake up. Then why don't you want to wake up? I don't want to go to school today. Why don't you want to go to, sc to, sc to uh, go to school today? First tell me why you uh, mother told him, why don't you want to go to school? So he said, first, all the children don't like me. Second, all the teachers also don't like me. So two good reasons, right? Then the mother also told him. Shall I tell you two reasons why you should go to school? Two good reasons. One, you are 50 years old. And two, you are the principal of the school. <laughs> so you have to go to school, you can relax for that. So if you want to change your relaxation, there must be motivation, there must be two good reasons. And that's what the human law tells you. First law tells you, there must be a reason if you want to change of from your relaxing is not a crime. Being at equilibrium is not a crime. If you want to change the equilibrium, you want force, you need a force. So let us take Newton's first law. What makes a system change its state of motion? There is a state of motion for a system. What makes the system change its state of motion? So, Newton's first law does uh, two things. So, the state of Newton's law is, you will continue your state of motion 
and then there is sufficient commotion. <laughs> there are two things which Newton's law does. First, it defines inertia, and then it defines force. Right? <laughs> so this is the correct understanding of the uh, the adventure. This is the adventure of learning. Uh, this, uh,